Hello everyone, welcome back. So as we have started the osteology of lower limb and so in the previous tutorial we discussed the osteology of hip bone. So now let's proceed towards the anatomy of our next bone of the lower limb and that's the femur bone. So this long bone is obviously the femur bone and it articulates above with the acetabulum of the os coxae to form the hip joint and below it articulates with the tibia and the patella to form the knee joint. So we will discuss the femur bone in a similar way to our discussion of hip bone. So we will discuss the different parts of femur, its different surfaces and the different bony features of femur bone. So you can see that both of these femur bones have now been colored in different colors and these colors show different parts of these bones. So let's take one of these two femur bones to discuss these parts of femur. Okay, so we have isolated one of those two femur bones and we will use it to describe the different parts of femur bone. So first we will describe the different parts in the upper end of this bone and then we will move downwards to describe the other parts in the middle and lower ends of this bone. So in the upper end of the femur bone you can see this somehow spherical bony part which is about two thirds of a sphere and this spherical bony part of the femur bone is actually the head of the femur and it articulates with the acetabulum of the os coxae to form the hip joint and in the center of this head of the femur you can see this small depression called the fovea capitis. And this fovea capitis serves as the attachment site for the ligament of the head of the femur. So part of the blood supply to the head of the femur from the obturator artery is conveyed along the ligament of the head of the femur and enters the bone at this fovea capitis. So just distal to the head of the femur you can see this part of the femur bone which connects the head to the shaft of the femur. And this part is called the neck of the femur bone. And this neck of the femur bone passes downward, backward and laterally and forms an angle of about 125 degree with the long axis of the shaft. And this angle is slightly less in the female. And you need to know that the size of this angle can be altered by different diseases of the neck of the femur. So at the junction of the neck and the shaft of the femur you can see these two eminences. So, this large blunt quadrilateral eminence on the proximal end of the femur is the greater trochanter while this blunt conical projection on the proximal end of the femur is the lesser trochanter. So the greater trochanter projects from the superior aspect of the junction between the neck and the shaft of the femur while the lesser trochanter projects medially from the posterior inferior aspect of the junction between the neck and the shaft of the femur. So these were the parts of femur bone in its upper end and now let's move downwards towards this long tubular part of the bone which is the body or shaft of femur bone. And the shaft of femur bone is narrowest at its middle area and expands at both its proximal and distal ends. So you can see that the shaft of femur bone is smooth and rounded on its anterior surface. But that's not the case about its posterior surface because posteriorly you can see this roughened ridge on the shaft of femur bone and this ridge is called the linea aspera and to the linea aspera are attached different muscles and intermuscular septa. So let's rotate this bone back towards the anterior view and let's move further downward to discuss the bony parts in the lower end of this bone. So in the lower end of the femur bone you can see these two articular eminences. So this medially located round articular eminence on the distal end of the femur is the medial condyle of femur while this laterally located round articular eminence on the distal end of the femur is the lateral condyle of femur. And these two condyles are separated posteriorly by this depression found along the posterior inferior aspect of the distal end of the femur and this depression is called the intercondylar notch or intercondylar fossa. 
So these were the different parts of femur bone and now let's discuss the different surfaces of this bone. So first let's take a look at the upper or proximal end of this bone. So in the upper end of this bone you can see this rough ridge which is both on the anterior and medial aspects of the proximal end of this bone. So this rough ridge is called the intertrochanteric line. So you can see that the intertrochanteric line spirals inferomedially from the greater to the lesser trochanter of femur and it forms the anterior and medial portions of the junction between the body and neck of femur. So let's zoom out and let's take a look at the lower end of this bone. So in the lower or distal end of this bone you can see this groove like area on the anterior aspect of the distal end of femur. So this groove like area is called the patellar surface of femur. And it is located between the articular facets of the medial and lateral condyles of femur. And the reason why it is called as the patellar surface of femur is that it articulates with the vertical ridge of patella and so it contributes to the formation of the patellofemoral joint. So let's zoom out once again and let's take a look at this whole smooth area on the frontal aspect of the body of femur. So this region is called the anterior surface of femur and it is one of the five surfaces of the body of femur. So the other four being the lateral, medial, posterior and popliteal surfaces. So if you rotate this bone to a medial view so you would be able to see this whole smooth area on the posterior medial aspect of the body of femur. So this area is called the medial surface of femur. And if you rotate this bone all the way to a lateral view, so you would be able to see this whole area on the posterior lateral aspect of the body of femur. So this area is called the lateral surface of femur. So in between the lateral and anterior surfaces of femur, you can see this margin, which is located along the anterior lateral aspect of the body of femur. So this marginal area is called the lateral border of femur. So the lateral border of femur extends inferiorly from the greater trochanter to the lateral condyle of femur. While in between the anterior and medial surfaces of femur you would be able to see this margin which is located along the anterior medial aspect of the body of femur. So this marginal area is called the medial border of femur. And you can see that the medial border of femur extends inferiorly from the intertrochanteric line to the medial condyle of femur. So once again we will rotate this bone but this time to a posterior view in order to discuss the remaining two surfaces which are the posterior and popliteal surfaces. So first let's take a look at the proximal end of this bone. So Posteriorly in the proximal end of this bone you can see this ridge on the posterior aspect of the proximal end of the femur. So this is called as the intertrochanteric crest. And you can see that the intertrochanteric crest extends inferomedially from the greater to the lesser trochanter of femur and it forms the posterior portion of the junction between the body and neck of femur. So let's zoom out once again and let's move downward so that we could be able to take a look at this rough broad ridge that travels down along the posterior aspect of the body of femur. So we already know that this ridge is called as the linea aspera. So the linea aspera consists of medial and lateral lips with an intermediate zone. And we will discuss this division of linea aspera into zones after a while when we will be discussing the bony features of femur. So superior lateral to the linea aspera you can see this broad rough margin located along the upper posterior lateral aspect of the body of femur. And this is called as the gluteal tuberosity. So you can see that the gluteal tuberosity is the superior continuation of the lateral lip of linea aspera. And if we focus superior medially to the linea aspera, so we would be able to see this rough margin which is located along the upper posterior medial aspect of the body of femur. So this is called as the spiral line. So the spiral line is the superior continuation of the medial lip of linea aspera 
and it spirals in a superomedial direction to become continuous with the intertrochanteric line. So that means that the spiral line and the gluteal tuberosity are the superior continuations of linea aspera. So if you look at the inferior continuations of linea aspera, so you can see this margin located along the lower posterior lateral aspect of the body of femur. And this is called as the lateral supracondylar ridge. So the lateral supracondylar ridge is the inferior continuation of the lateral lip of linea aspera. And if we look at this margin, which is located along the lower posterior medial aspect of the body of femur, so this is called as the medial supracondylar ridge. So the medial supracondylar ridge is the inferior continuation of the medial lip of linea aspera. So that means that the medial and lateral supracondylar lines are the inferior continuations of linea aspera. Now in between the medial and lateral supracondylar lines you can see this smooth triangular area on the posterior inferior aspect of the body of femur. So this area is called the popliteal surface of femur. While in between the gluteal tuberosity and the spiral line you can see this area on the posterior superior aspect of the body of femur. And this is called as the posterior surface of femur. So now you would have noticed that we have discussed all the five surfaces of the body of femur which include the anterior, medial, lateral, posterior and popliteal surfaces. And you would also have noticed that among those five surfaces, the posterior and popliteal surfaces can be found posteriorly on the body of femur. So now we are only left with a few of the bony features of this bone and now in the distal end of this bone you can see that there are some colored areas which means that most of the remaining bony features which we haven't discussed till now are in the distal end and some of them are also on the posterior surface as well. So let's zoom in the distal end of this bone and let's have a look at this smooth convex area found on the anterior, inferior and posterior aspects of the medial condyle of femur. So this is called as the articular facet of medial condyle of femur. While this smooth convex area found on the anterior, inferior and posterior aspects of lateral condyle of femur is the articular facet of lateral condyle of femur. And you can see that the articular facets of lateral and medial condyles of femur are continuous with the patellar surface of femur. So let's rotate this bone to an anterior medial view and let's have a look at this small tubercular prominence found on the superior medial aspect of the medial condyle of femur, which is called as the adductor tubercle. And this adductor tubercle provides an insertion site for the adductor magnus muscle. So a little distal to this adductor tubercle you can see this rough eminence found along the medial aspect of the medial condyle of femur which is called as the medial epicondyle of femur. And the medial epicondyle of femur provides an attachment site for the tibial collateral ligament. And after that, if we rotate this bone to an anterolateral view, so we will be able to have a look at this rough eminence found along the lateral aspect of the lateral condyle of femur. And this is called as the lateral epicondyle of femur. So the lateral epicondyle of femur serves as an attachment site for several musculoskeletal elements. So it provides an origin site for the popliteus muscle and the lateral head of gastronomius muscle and it also serves as an attachment site for the fibular collateral ligament. So just distal to this lateral epicondyle of femur you can see this smooth curved depression which is found along the lateral aspect of the lateral condyle of femur and this is called as the groove for popliteus muscle or popliteal groove. So this groove serves as a passageway for the tendon of popliteus muscle. So the tendon of popliteus muscle passes through this groove and attaches to its anterior end.
so let's zoom it out and let's rotate this bone to a posterior view so that we could be able to discuss the remaining bony features on the posterior surface of this bone. So previously we talked about the linea aspera and we pointed out that the linea aspera has been divided into three zones. So this edge of the linea aspera is the lateral lip of linea aspera while this one is the medial lip of linea aspera. And in between these two, you can find this narrow rough area which is bounded by the medial and lateral lips. So, this is called as the intermediate zone of linea aspera. So, the reason why the linea aspera has been divided into these zones is that these zones serve as an attachment site for different muscles of the lower limb. So, the division of the linea aspera into these zones makes it convenient for the reader to understand the attachments of different muscles of the lower limb. So, if you move a bit proximally, so you would be able to have a look at this ridge found along the posterior aspect of the proximal end of the body of femur. So, this is called as the pectineal line of femur. So you can see that the pectineal line of femur is the superior continuation of the intermediate zone of linea aspera and it extends up to the lesser trochanter of femur and provides an insertion site for the pectineus muscle. So if you move a bit more proximally, so we would be able to have a look at this small prominence on the posterior aspect of the proximal end of femur. So this is called as the quadrate tubercle. So you can see that the quadrate tubercle is found along the intertrochanteric crest close to its midpoint. And now we will rotate this bone to a superior view in order to have a look at this rough deep depression found along the posterior superior aspect of the proximal end of femur. So this is called as the trochanteric fossa. And we have already discussed this small pit like structure in the beginning of our tutorial which is found on the medial aspect of the head of femur. So we know that this is called as the fovea capitis and we also know that the fovea capitis provides an attachment site for the ligament of head of femur. So with that our tutorial on the anatomy of femur comes to an end. So if you have any confusion in what we studied you can ask me in the comment section. Thank you so much.